after a Tarrant County boy disappeared, his mother is now charged with capital murder. Missing six-year-old Noel Rodriguez Alvarez of Everman is presumed dead. Authorities say his mother, Cindy Rodriguez Singh, and her husband left the country with their six children just days after police began looking into the little boy's whereabouts. The fugitive couple, believed to be in India, Fox 4's David Centendry, live with today's developments. David. Well, investigators never found Noel's body, and while they do not have a lot of direct evidence indicating that a murder did take place, they say they've ruled out just about every other possibility. The Tarrant County Grand Jury has indicted Cindy Rodriguez Singh on felony charges, including capital murder. The mother of Noel Rodriguez Alvarez is now facing a series of felony indictments, but investigators still have to find her. These indictments will significantly support our effort to apprehend and extradite Cindy back to the United States. Six-year-old Noel was last seen one year ago. Everman police investigators believe he is dead and that Noel's mother, Cindy Rodriguez Singh, fled the country to India with Noel's stepfather and six of Noel's siblings in March, after family members reported Noel was missing for quite some time. The indictments should make it easier for federal investigators to locate the family overseas and extradite Rodriguez Singh, according to Everman police chief Craig Spencer. I do know that we are working with the best of the best in the business. Noel's remains have not been found. The capital murder indictment was issued after a grand jury was shown evidence ruling out possible outcomes that would explain anything but murder, according to the chief. Leaving us down to one simple conclusion that he was murdered. The family lived in a shed behind the home of a family friend. Chief Spencer says Rodriguez Singh showed a history of inhumane abuse and neglect toward Noel and believed the child was possessed by a demon. The chief also says Rodriguez Singh worshipped Santa Muerte, a dark practice often associated with protection amongst drug cartels. Make no mistake that our work is not done. Just because we have an indictment on the table now doesn't mean that our investigation has to stop. Yeah, the charges to Noel's mother are capital murder, two counts of injury to a child, and abandoning without the intent to return. As for Noel's stepfather, who's also apparently on the run, the chief of police today says he has not rolled out any additional charges, indictments coming his way. But again, those charges that a grand jury announced today are just for Noel's mother. Steve, Heather, I'll send it back to y'all. Okay, David Centendry, reporting live tonight. Thank you. Dallas police call it a cruel, unprovoked attack on a homeless man. It's the focus of this week's trackdown. The man survived the assault, including being stabbed. Fox 4 Sean Rabb has surveillance video provided by police that does not show the violence, though, and images of the people detectives say did this from their own Facebook Live video. I'm with Detective Brody Bags. We're in East Dallas, the 7-Eleven at 1885 John West. Detective, what happened here? Just, what, Thursday night, Friday night? Yes, sir, Thursday night. Um, so there was a, a homeless individual that was here that had gone inside and purchased something, and he was standing outside of the store when a group of about five um, individuals, two black males and three black females, came out of the store and approached him. Um, they began threatening him and taunting him. Um, they threw bottles at him, um, threw trash at him, hit him with the lid to the trash can, and at uh, one point they ended up producing, producing a knife and they stabbed him two times. Um, we had found a, uh, a, a Facebook video that showed the faces of the suspects. So they did like a Facebook Live or yes, something? Yes, they did a Facebook Live. We have four suspects that have, we have pretty good pictures of their face. One we couldn't get a picture of because they were inside of the car, so we don't know um, what she looks like. We didn't have a picture of her. The ones you do have, if you know them, will you know them? Yes, sir. You'll be able to recognize them. What do you need? Um, I need I need names, you know, if you know where they live, phone numbers, anything about these people to help me identify who they are. And he didn't bother them at all? No, he was standing there very trying to, you know, let them walk away and, and kind of de-escalate the situation and they just kept pushing him and kept up. They surrounded him and at one point they got him on the ground and all five of them started jumping him, punching him, kicking him and, and then they uh, took off and they fled in two vehicles. It went on for almost 10 minutes where they kind of were assaulting and messing with this guy um, for no reason other than he was here um, and it really was just kind of really hard to watch on the video. So I'm guessing there were people coming and going while this happened? Yes, sir. Certainly no one intervened and no one called 911? No, sir. But you need someone to call 
you now. Yes, sir. How can folks reach Detective Brody Bass? So they can call me on my cell phone or text me, 214-676-0548, um, or they can email me at brody.bags at dallaspolice.gov. Recognize these faces? Get at Detective Brody Bags. Help bring these people to justice who attacked a homeless man here at 1885 John West. All right, thank you both. And you can watch past track down stories, maybe help solve a crime. Go to our Fox 4 YouTube page, youtube.com slash Fox 4 News. Dart says one of its bus drivers was shot and carjacked when he was going to his car when his shift was over. It happened yesterday over the lunch hour at the J.B. Jackson Jr. Transit Center near Fair Park. Dart says a suspect, a woman, was arrested. Fox 4's Rebecca Butcher joining us now with this story. Rebecca. Yeah, Heather, a dark bus operator was shot and carjacked in broad daylight in the middle of the day. Their personal vehicle was stolen. Meanwhile, the suspect, she's been booked into the Dallas County Jail. Well, Dart says about 12.30 Thursday afternoon, one of its bus operators was shot and carjacked in South Dallas. Dart says the attack happened in the parking lot of the J.B. Jackson Jr. Transit Center just south of Fair Park. The bus operator's personal car was stolen when Dart believes the driver's shift was over. He was shot. The uh, suspect then unfortunately took his keys and left with his vehicle. Gordon Shadows with Dart says Dart police officers were able to track the stolen car and arrest the suspect a woman near Mesquite. Dart Police Department had done a fantastic job of following the suspect. Uh, very easy to identify because she was in the victim's car. Uh, very quickly took her into custody without any further concerns. The suspect was jailed on a charge of aggravated assault of a public servant. The bus operator's car was recovered. And the bus operator is on the mend. Dart would not say whether the suspected carjacker's gun was recovered, saying that's part of the ongoing investigation. Dart has recently upgraded security at stations and on trains because of growing crime issues. Issues, but says something like this is uncommon. This is a very rare occurrence. Of course, the last thing we want is anything to happen like this, one to our employees, but our riders as well. Dart was unable to say if there were any security guards present in the parking lot at the time of the shooting. There were no Dart police present. In July, Dart announced it hired more than 100 additional transit security officers to improve safety and security. That's in addition to its more than 250 Dart police officers. But just last month, a man was murdered on the Dart Bachman train station during rush hour. As of Friday, Dart says no arrest has been made for that killing. So the goal, of course, is to make sure we have a security presence on all of our platforms, 65 in total, as well as all of our trains. Yeah, and the victim was rushed to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries and is expected to recover. Meanwhile, Dart police, they're leading the investigation. Sky 4 video shows about a dozen bullet holes across the front windshield of an SUV along I-30 west of Dale Rock Road in Rowlett Wednesday afternoon. Even more bullet holes can be seen on the driver's side of the vehicle and the back window. There are many unanswered questions about what led to this scene. For now, we know two Rockwall County Sheriff's deputies were chasing the SUV, according to Texas DPS, before they were involved in a shooting with the driver. DPS did not say whether the driver also fired shots, but no deputies or innocent drivers were hurt. That's just crazy. Renita Adams lives nearby with her 16-year-old daughter. This is like a quiet little neighborhood. Nothing happens or anything like that. Westbound lanes of the interstate shut down as investigators collected evidence. Eastbound drivers were traveling at a crawl throughout the evening. The Texas Rangers are now investigating. Neither the Rangers or Rockwall County Sheriff's Office has said what led to the chase, what sparked the gunfire, and they have not given any details about the driver. Authorities said the driver was injured, but did not report the extent of that person's injuries or how many times that person may have been shot. Reporting, David Cententry, Fox 4 News. All right, Dan, thank you. A Dallas woman is one of nearly two dozen across the country alleging sexual assault by Uber drivers. Those women are joining together in one lawsuit against the rideshare company. They say Uber has not done enough to protect passengers from predators. Fox 4 Sean Rabb in studio now. Sean. One of those is a Dallas case. There have been many individual sex assault lawsuits against the company over the years. This is different. 22 women in 11 states, their attorneys bringing them before one federal judge in what's called a multi-district litigation.
First and foremost, we want change to occur on the system. Houston attorney Brett Stanley leading a national committee of lawyers bringing what's called a multi-district litigation sex assault lawsuit against Uber. Multi-district litigation is, is everybody maintains their own individual case and they are shepherded to one federal judge somewhere in America. 22 cases in 11 states being funneled through one federal judge in San Francisco. One benefit to the plaintiffs of having this all come together in a multi-district case as it has is that is sometimes a first step down a road towards a mass settlement of a lot of claims. Among those, a Dallas woman who in 2021 fell asleep in the back of an Uber and allegedly awoke to being fondled by the driver. Obviously, this is a very traumatic event for her. Uh, she's still dealing with this, these issues. She's working through the problems and the fear that she has entering other vehicles, being around public people, going through some of the uh, shame she feels, even though she shouldn't, of going to sleep in the back of the vehicle. And one of the things we're trying to do is to make sure that these rideshare companies, especially Uber, removes drivers once they know that this person is a problem in the vehicle. David Cole says Uber, as part of its defense, will point to the accused drivers, claiming they are not our employees, but freelance, independent contract workers. And one of its arguments is going to be, I mean, whatever we did as a company, there's another issue here entirely, which is the driver <laughs> made the decision to violate the law and commit these terrible acts. And they bear uh, varying degrees of responsibility, depending on the facts and what the state law may be. In some cases, all of the blame could fairly be assigned to them. As it pertains to ride share litigation, this is the first MDL, multi-district litigation, that's been created against rideshare companies in the gig economy. Litigation that could draw new legal guidelines for the growing gig economy. And this kind of case is really going to put that under the microscope and force people to come up with some, some pretty clear standards. And the plaintiff's attorneys expect more people will step out of the shadows with claims now that this multi-district litigation is going forward. Back to you. All right, Sean Rabin, studio, thank you.